you now have a league in the United States that has stronger ownership than the Premier League. The MLS teams now, the valuations of those teams are somewhere between half a billion for the new expansion teams to well over a billion for the leading teams. You know, Premier League teams are not selling for that outside of the, t- the top few teams. Newcastle was, what, 300 million yeah. or so. So MLS has, uh, I think they have about 25, 26 soccer-specific stadiums, brand mm-hmm. new, beautiful stadiums for, for football. What is it that's driving that type of confidence that those owners have and those investors have to give it that kind of stability? Because it's not, you know, respectfully, it's not at the level of the Premier League on the field. So where is that confidence? Where are those valuations? Where is that optimism coming from? We created a soccer league, a football league, which was completely different to anything else that had ever existed. It's very centralized with the league. And even all of the players are actually signed by the leagues. And the teams, in some sense, are like regional offices competing against each other. And what that's enabled MLS to do over the years is to do things like sign Lionel Messi, for example. You know, they can step outside their box and do some special things. What I do know with certainty is there would be no league today if it were not for that model. So it was a necessity. Whereas football around the world is based on the exact opposite, yeah. right? It's, it's based on jeopardy. It's a double-edged sword, you know. I mean, you want that feeling. You know, winner takes all, relegation, all of these things are amazing. But it also leads on the other side of it to, you know, the bankruptcies and a lot of the financial problems we see in football. 